Okay, good afternoon. It's uh, Monday the 12th of April 2021. Um, can I um, welcome you to the Cabinet meeting, the remote Cabinet meeting of the Wilgo Morgan Council. Uh, first item on the agenda is apologies for absence. Um, no, no, I'm going to do a minute silence. I will do a minute silence, but I'm going to do apologies for absence first because I think it's important we have to make sure we know who's here. So apologies for absence. I think uh, Councillor Peter King is uh, is not he's with us. Got, he's got a pressing personal matter. Okay, thank you very much. In that case, we will go on. Um, as you as you know, this week we've seen the passing of His Royal Highness the Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh. You have clearly been a loss to the nation, and our condolences and sympathy goes out to Her Majesty the Queen and the royal family at this sad time. So can I ask that we please mark his passing with uh, a minute silence, please? And I will start that now. Thank you very much. OK, and next item is, is the minutes of the meeting of the, the previous meeting. Can I ask anybody to agree them, please? A formally second, leader. Thank you very much. Next item is to, to receive any declarations of interest, if there are any. I think there are none. OK, thank you. Before we start the meeting proper, what I normally do at this stage is make a comment in relation to COVID-19, because clearly it is still with us. Um, although the figures are coming down and we're starting to go into something of a, of a recovery. Um, the, 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 the item itself is still with us, the COVID-19 is still with us. All I, all I would ask is that um, anybody who's offered a vaccination, please, please take up the vaccinations. I know I've had my second jab um, and I'm very pleased to have done so. And I know the rest of my family have all, also had the first jab so far. Um, very simple. I think we all need to make sure that we keep ourselves safe, our friends safe, our family safe, but more particularly our community safe. So without further ado, I will go to the uh, agenda proper. And the first item on the agenda is the minutes of the um, Cardiff Bay Advisory Committee. I think Liz um, attends the meeting and I've had a re read of it. Um, most of the things that I've been noting, I noticed there were some issues in relation to the cycle paths and, and issues that were brought up in relation to um, uh, the the marina, which were addressed in the in a minute. I don't know if you've got any comments to make, Liz, please. Um, thank you, Lita. Well, it's always it's always an interesting meeting. Always lots of, of snippets of information um, that are helpful for people like me that, that live in the area. Um, I, I was able at the meeting to, to clarify a few misunderstandings in relation to um, sort of active travel routes around the marina, and I, I think that uh, they found that of use. But no, the, really, the, the, the minutes are, are there for uh, anyone to, to read and, um, and, and pick up on that. So um, I'll, I'll move we note. OK, so I'll read. I'll second that, yeah. Thank you very much. Next item on the agenda is the annual delivery monitoring report for quarter three. Um, it's quite a comprehensive document and I will take some issues out of it. The, the performance report presents our progress at this quarter, quarter three, towards achieving our annual delivery plan commitments. Um, obviously, despite COVID-19, we've, uh, we've still made positive progress. The performance overall, though, is, is classed as amber status. All four of the corporate plan objectives were attributed to an amber performance. Um, and this is positive, if you think, given the unprecedented circumstances in which we're currently operating. 70% or 60, 60, 61, uh, 161 of the 231 planned objectives have been attributed a green performance. 
24% of 55 were attributed to red. And um, if we look at some of those issues, 50% um, <clears throat> of those, uh, sorry, 91%, 50 of those that were a result of, 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 of red performance were <clears throat> the result of service reprioritization measures undertaken in response to the impact of the COVID-19. Um, work is now obviously recommencing as part of our recovery strategy. Progress in relation to the recovery has been reported to members uh, in, in the presentations of, of quarter three to scrutiny committees. Recovery will continue to form part of our quarterly performance reporting and to ensure members maintain an oversight and of the recovery issues and across obviously the council in general. Um, of the 64 quarterly performance measures aligned to our corporate well-being objectives, uh, data was reported for 38 measures. 26 were attributed green, three amber, and nine uh, red status. Data was available was unavailable for nine quarterly measures uh, due to the reprioritization, as I said earlier, um, as a response to the impact of COVID-19. Um, in relation to the nine measures attributable red performance status, the impact of COVID-19 has obviously contributed to missing targets in each of those cases. Um, as I also said, all five scrutiny committees have reviewed the performance reports and have noted the performance results and progress to date uh, in relation to the annual delivery plan and coronavirus recovery. What this report seeks is Cabinet's consideration of the views and recommendations of scrutiny committee and approval of identified rem remedial actions as a basis to address areas of underperformance and to tackle the key ch challenges identified. In addition, Cabinet is requested to note overall service performance results to date and progress made towards receive, re achieving the priorities in our annual delivery plan 2021 and in relation to the coronavirus recovery strategy. As I said, it is a comprehensive document. I do not intend to go through it in any, any detail because you, we all had the documents before. It's been to all uh, five scrutiny committees and indeed they have noted the progress and the performance to date. And I've ever got any comments, please. Liz, I think you've got your hand up. Thank you, Leader. Yes, I have. Um, I mean, there's so much in this report and I think it's, it is important to know that when you think of it, the, the, the three quarters that, that this represents are when we were really in in the um, right in the centre of, of a coronavirus pandemic, and I, I'd just like to draw attention just a couple of things here um, within it. Is one is is the way in which our, our library staff stepped up. Um, a lot of people would be saying, "Oh, but our libraries were closed." Well, maybe the buildings were for quite a lot of the time, but our library staff certainly weren't um, inactive. They were working with our community libraries who also need to be recognised for the stuff that they did. And, and if you look at the detail on it, um, uh, Dennis Powers Library, the, the, our staff assisted the setup of an online art club, which had over 60 members. Ultimately, uh, Wembo Library produced an online daily advent calendar. Roos Library set themselves up as a charity on Amazon Smile. So if you do choose to buy things online, you can you can support them. Our libraries did all sorts of things digitally and some people that were less than fully um, em employed in that actually also volunteered to be repurposed to go and help to distribute the business grants, um, which I think between business grants and and, um, and uh, business rate rebate is, is, is up at 50 millions now, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to, to draw attention to is the fact that um, we've, in that period, we've provided over 4,000 um, IT devices to pupils and teachers. Um, and then if we add on that in, by May, end of May this year, we'll have given out an extra 2,500 extra. So it's about 6,500 devices in our aim to um, make sure that, that children have suitable access to, to IT. And we've completed recabling in 18 of our schools so that we're, we're meeting um, our targets 
of all our schools being completely um, digitally enabled. So I just wanted to draw attention to that amongst the, the huge range of other things as well. If people want to know more about um, what's been happening in our libraries, then our library service are actually doing a presentation to scrutiny on Thursday. So I would um, advise people to, to tune in. OK, thank you for that. And everybody else, I, I, one thing I should probably highlight is that Appendix A does outline the performance of the period, um, but also there are other appendices in Appendix B, for example, does provide a summary of the key achievements um, and challenges uh, as, aligned to, as, as aligned with the Scrutiny Committee's uh, performances. And again, Appendix C is included, um, which in, it includes the direction of travel and the commentary on the performance. So it is a comprehensive report which covers covers all area of the council and our annual annual de de delivery plan. Um, so I, I do commend it to you. Um, and what I would re make a recommendation is that the cabinet uh, notes and endorses the performance results and progress towards achieving the annual delivery plan 2021 and and, and the 2021 commitments as aligned to our corporate plan well-being objectives as presented in the report and appendices and that's why I talked about the appendices so I am slightly altering the recommendations as I say the cabinet notes and endorses uh, the performance results the two that the cabinet um, notes the views of the recommendations of the all scrutiny committees indeed as I said they they noted each of the performances um, so all uh, so we, we we will note the recommendations of the scrutiny committees in regulation three performance results and approve uh, approved identified remedial actions as a, as a basis to address um, areas of underperformance and to tackle the key issues identified so i think that's fairly clear and the three that the cabinet again uh, endorses the progress being made through our recovery strategy and directory recovery plans in response to the ongoing pandemic um, crisis um, cl clearly, we have a long way to go, but as, as, as you said, Liz, it's amazing the amount of work that's been done considering the fact that we, most of this was doing the mids of, 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 of the pandemic itself. Um, and I'd like to add a, a fourth if I could, and that is to thank all the staff and all the officers for, for the work that they've carried out during such a difficult period. So if you don't mind, I'll just add that one in because I think we should need to endorse the, the amount of work that is actually carried on by those people who actually carry out the work. And formally second, Lita. Thank you very much. OK, is everybody agreed? Good. The next item is the service plans, and this is to seek Cabinet's approval for the priority actions and reflected service plans and the proposed service improvement targets for the period 21-22 that will deliver the Council's annual delivery improvement plan part one, which is what we just talked about. As I, as I said, and maybe I should caveat this, is, is that this is a particularly lengthy report and it covers all the service areas and it's something which all of the Cabinet members have been involved in along with the, the senior officers within, the, within the, the organisation to put together the service plans because we can have a, a basic plan and our skeleton, but this is the, the meat and the, and, the, and the functions from which we go forward. So the, what this report does is presents our service plans and associated service improvement targets for 21-22. Um, these set out specific areas of focus associated with the delivery of the Council's uh, annual delivery plan 2021-22, uh, in line with what we've just basically looked at for the previous year. As you all know, the annual delivery plan will help meet our statutory uh, obligations, which place specific duties on the Council in relation to the objectives and uh, the, the objective settings and reporting and the Welsh, uh, Welsh Wellbeing and Future Generations Act. The Council is required to um, publish its wellbeing objective by the 31st of March each year. And if you recall, we did that at the Cabinet on the 8th of March. Uh, but not only that, it's all, we're also required to keep under review uh, the, the, the plan itself and the Council also has to set annual improvement objectives and publish these, these as soon as possible after the start of the financial year. This is the basis from which this goes forward. Um, there have been some changes this year in terms of the Local Government and Election Bill will replace the performance, uh, performance provision associated with the Local Government measures and they will place similar duties on local authorities. 
The final performance uh, report for the measures will be published by the 31st of October 2021, um, and they will be incorporated into the annual uh, review of performance uh, for, for um, 2021 uh, plan. However, in basic, basically, in, in, in bearing in mind the fact that there is new stuff coming in, it felt prudent to ensure that the annual delivery plan does meet the existing duties prescribed by the local government measures and the latest guidance associated with the local government and elections Wales bill. So it is a, a bit of a, a moving feast, if you want. But in line with our duties, uh, we continually review the relevance of our wellbeing objectives and the current objectives which were agreed in 2020 as part of the corporate plan 2020 to 2025. Now, these objectives have been reviewed um, to produce the Council's self-assessment and annual review performance, as well as the developing of the Council's coronavirus recovery strategy, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, we've also consulted and overall the majority of respondents agreed with our well-being objectives. We are assured, therefore, that our corporate uh, plan well-being objectives and the associated commitments outlined in the delivery plan are relevant in delivering improve, improved outcomes for the residents and to contribute to the national well-being goals. The annual uh, delivery plan and service plans will be undertaken with, within the context of the current pandemic and the Council's recovery strategy. The commitments of the annual delivery plan are shown in Appendix A, with the proposed service improvements at Appendix B. As I said, all scrutiny committees have considered the plans and, and service improvement par, um, targets and have accepted them. Cabinet are asked, therefore, to review and approve the service plans and service improvement targets for 2122. If we do that, then we'll, this will enable the Council to discharge its function, its statutory functions and duties and uh, outline how it proposes to meet those uh, objectives in year. Publication of the annual delivery plan will take place by a, 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 a variety of media following the approval of the annual delivery plan by Council on the 26th of April 2021. Uh, and this will ensure the Council is complying with its statutory duties. Progress will be monitored and reported quarterly in line with the corporate performance monitoring arrangements. As I said, um, this talks about the service plans. So we we have our annual delivery, delivery plan. These are the service plans and the target setting plans for the future. Uh, as I said, it is an extremely uh, weighty document and each of the cabinet members and uh, and, and lead officers have, have been through this in some detail. And I don't know if anybody wants to make any comments in relation to that or any of their service areas um, or just accept it as it is. Um, we will we will be uh, they have been um, put together in, with, with, you know, considerable effort um, and they will be reviewed during the course of the, the year. So if nobody's got any comments, I will move the recommendations that having reviewed the report, Cabinet approves the service plans at Appendix A and associated service improvement targets as the primary documents against which performance for the annual delivery plan, improvement plan part one, 21-22, will be monitored and measured. Two, that Cabinet also approves the proposed service improvement targets aligned to the corporate performance measures framework for 21-22, which are in Appendix B. That the Cabinet, um, I'm going to add a, a note in you, if I can, um, that the Cabinet notes the, with thanks the contributions made as reported in Appendix C, because I think Appendix C is important too, because that shows uh, the amount of work that's gone in actually to, uh, to, uh, to address the plan itself. And then finally, four, the Cabinet delegates authority to the Managing Director in consultation with the Leader to update the service plans and associated service improvements and sorry, sorry, associated service improvement targets with any amendments post Council. So basically, um, we, we've done the Animal Delivery Plan, we published it, it goes to Council on the 21st along with the service delivery plans and if there are any changes then, then we can um, we can approve them, we can amend them. Um, 
If nobody wants to take any comments, can I formally move those recommendations with the addition that that I've had? Uh, I, I wish to thank the contributors that were made uh, to the report as um, indicated in Appendix C. And formally, so. thank you very much. OK, item seven is the use of the managing director's emergency powers. And basically, this is as normal to notify cabinet of the exist uh, of the existence of uh, emergency powers or, or those exercised emergency powers exercised by the managing director. They are contained there. They are for noting. There are some in interesting points within it. For example, there was the, talking about the pandemic uh, emergency power in relation to residential home visitor pods. Also talked about the. Uh, ICF capital grants for social care, social services and housing, which are particularly important. One of the ones which is something which has been uh, have been dealt with over a long period is the re return of the Penarth Arts and Crafts Limited um, so that we have the Penarth Beer Pavilion back and uh, we will be dealing with that. And then uh, I'll just pick up the other one is the Green Infrastructure Project, uh, which is a capital and, and, and revenue grant from our government. Um, there are others, uh, but I just thought I'd highlight those. I don't know if anybody else got any comments to make in any of them. I think they were quite quite important ones to stress. Uh, bring in Liz first and then Ben, please. Uh, yes, thank you, Linda. Um, has somebody got their microphone on or something? Uh, mm -hmm. Not sure. But anyway, sorry. Um, I, first of all, I'm sure we, we quite often have um, emergency powers when we have grant funding come in or there's an initiative of some sort that we need to agree to um, accept the funding in, in a sort of short time scale. And I'm sure had uh, Peter been here, he would have wanted to draw attention to the sign off of the road safety 20 mile an hour pilot um, in St. Bride's, which he um, really was, was pleased to be able to deliver. Um, for myself, um, I'm, I'm I echo your your um, thoughts on on Penarth Arts and Crafts, but I would comment that actually, it, in the middle of a pandemic, it wasn't something that an awful lot of our officers had time to be spending um, and, and working on this. But in order to meet the deadline set by uh, funders and the situation, etc., then it was essential that that um, emergency powers was used rather than um sort of longer process and then really from, from my perspective is to note with pleasure which will be detailed when as the um capital budget is is detailed out um the award of um 2.25 million asset um maintenance funding so that um we can actually do an awful lot more um, with our schools in the in the coming year um, and um, so I said full details of that will be in the um, the, the capital program forthcoming. Thank you Liz, uh, Ben of you please. Thank you leader and um, thank you for um, drawing attention to to some of the items um, under under my portfolio area previously I think um, it's really important to understand, you know, emergency powers are used when things are time sensitive and we are back to a full meeting schedule and it can look unusual to have such a long list, but it's worth bearing in mind we're towards the end of a financial year where grants become available and, and, and we need to be able to put things in place. So um, that's why there's so many of them at this particular juncture. Um, and um, I think it's really important in the context of talking about visitor pods in, in care homes, but also the other capital money to make them more dementia friendly, to, to, to deal with the support for our residents in, in those vulnerable um, play, uh, you know, uh, the vulnerable residents in, in, in those facilities is this is for a lot of people where the understanding of how vulnerable people are affected by the pandemic started and you know it's been a year of people not able to go and visit um people in in care homes and um we've all been touched uh, haven't we by by what the what the pandemic's done to our inter interactions with people and and so um it was very um heartening to be able to move forward in our journey of, of, of beginning to relax and, and get people back in and visiting and, and in some form for their own mental health and 
and well-being and um you know we, we would have all liked to have done so much more so more quickly um and uh there's there's always going to be things that we we're going to have to regret from from this from this year so I, I think it's important to reflect um as as we reflect on on the somber occasion regarding his royal highness's passing that you know that there's been so many um who've been affected by by this and this past year has been particularly challenging so it's 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 a collective moment for us to think about that i guess and um and, and the positives that come out of what, what we can put in place um in, to give some limited contact so uh, i just wanted to reflect that thank you no, no, thank you. Thank you. And, and it, you're absolutely right to, to highlight the fact that, that there's, there's so many grants come in late late in the day, usually at the beginning of March, got to be spent by the end of March. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it is important that, that we are not, all, not only able to do it, the fact is that we, uh, we know that our staff are able to do it and they're waiting for it and they will make sure that it's achievable because sometimes uh, some of the, the timescales are ridiculously short i have to say but um but when we can use the the emergency powers then we can get on with it and that's that's the whole purpose of it simply for reporting but as i said they are not they're, they're not simple things they're important things but they need doing urgently and that's the purpose of the report in itself okay that's good thank you um if there's no other comments then we uh, note the use of those powers we then go on to agenda uh, eight which is <clears throat> the request by New with Housing Association to purchase the council's freehold in St. Gatman's Road, Penarth. And this is from the Cabinet Member Housing and Building Services, Margaret. Thank you, Leader. Yes, this is a request by New with Housing Association to purchase the council's freehold interest at St. Gatman's Road, Penarth. Council has received an, a, a formal request from New with Housing Association to purchase the freehold of a social housing development at St. Gallen's Road, Penarth. The estate comprises of 66 social rented homes, was built in 1989 to provide a much needed housing in the Penarth area. Newith is titled to uh, buy the freehold, and this is a way they are coming now to us, why they're coming to us, uh, to ask us, can they please have approval. There is another way they could do it, to go through a different route, but it's costly and it takes a, a long time to do because they have to go to each individual home and assess them and value them and give formal notice. So they're asking us to allow them to do this through the council. But it will be necessary to obtain the consent from the Welsh Government. They must approve it. So we have to go to the Welsh Government. Uh, it's the Housing Act of 1985 only allows it disposal of vacant property to the Housing Association. Yeah. There is three recommendations and they're in front of you. I'm not going to read them all out, but okay. uh, and it does state in there that we have to go to the Welsh Assembly. Well, the Welsh Government for approval. So I'm asking for approval of this, please. OK, I think it's fairly straightforward. As you say, uh, they have a right to uh, a right to buy through the, the freehold. Uh, this is a, an, an alternative route. Uh, seems a more sensible route to me. Um, yeah. And recommendations are before us and there's some delegation within those regulation within those recommendations too. Um, I'm, I'm happy for, for this to move forward. I don't think they ask any comments. But I'm happy to second and therefore move on. Yes. OK, thank good. Thank you. No, thank you. Uh, next item is item nine is uh, section 106 protocol calling. Uh, this is the allocation of section 106 sustainable transport contribution received uh, from the development referred to as the land at the rear of St. David's Primary School, Colvinston. And this is um, being de dealt with by um, Councillor Eddie Williams, who's legal regulatory and planning services. In, in the absence, uh, it's a joint report of, of Peter King, uh, clearly who is it's away on personal business. Um, Eddie, can I ask you to deal with the report, please? Thank, thank you, Leader. Yes, um, as you explained, it's it's a call in. So it's, um, um, the report outlines the basis of the initial decision and some background. If I go through the executive summary first. The, the council adopted the section 106 protocol 
um, some time ago, and um, it, it, it outlines the process, and it's for the development service area to put forward appropriate schemes for each Section 106 contribution. And it takes into consideration needs arising from the new development and compliance with legal with the legal definition. Members are then notified of final proposals and the final decisions made by the head of planning and regeneration. And if there's any disagreement, an elected member, any elected member has 14 days to request the decision. It's called in um, by cabinet to determine, and hence that's why we've got this here. Um, the protocol is in Appendix A for the benefit of people reading the report. The council received a financial contribution secured via Section 106 agreement from the development at Lantern Rear St David's um, Church and Wales Primary School in Colvinston, equaling £132,191.52 um, and there's a plan with reference to that, 2014 00242. Uh, okay, and the contribution is legally defined and can only be used by the council to provide or improve sustainable transport facilities serving the de development. Um, it's been proposed to spend the contribution as follows. Um, £5,000 allocated to Green Links and Community Transport and a balance £127,191.52 towards a pedestrian improvement scheme outside of the school. And um, this links the school with a play area community centre mm -hmm. and that's in the plan uh, Appendix B. Um, Council Cave has requested that the proposal for this one of six sustainable transfer contribution is called in for determination by Cabinet in accordance with the adopted pro protocol. Councillor Cave has indicated in her calling request that the scheme should take into consideration the movement of the electricity substation, which is located in the adopted highway verge adjacent to St David's Church and Wales Primary School. It's considered that the relocation of substation is not required to provide safe and practical sustainable transport enhancements to support the development of Healy Kai Crew and the replacement primary school. Officers have raised significant concerns that the cost of re relocating the substation is unreasonable and would not meet the definition of sustainable transport facilities as defined within the Section 106 agreement. The fifth schedule makes provisions for repayment of contributions with interest and um, that have not been spent in accordance with the legal agreement within five years of payment. Officers recommend that the proposals as outlined in Appendix B are progressed to, de to detail feasibility, design and thereafter implementation. Using the balance of the Section 106 the same transport contribution of £127,191.52 pence. Any balance remaining will be considered for future schemes following the detailed feasibility and design of the scheme. In the report, it goes into the background and, and certainly um, it's clear that the, yeah, this, the substation has been an ongoing issue for some time um, since the development. Um, you know, the original um, the, sorry, let me go back to section one, two. We entered into the Section 106 agreement in you know 2015, and uh, you know it's for the development of houses. But um, it says on there that um, you know we can see what what was developed on, and you can see that in the Appendix C, all what was listed on as part of that agreement. And then one three goes into detail about what sustainable transport facilities meaning is, and lists things like bus stops and enhancing uh, pedestrian access and things like that, cycle routes, and even the system where bus services or whatever. The um, second one for um, the council covenants within this agreement to use all the sums received under the terms of this deed. And consequently, the council can only legally spend this contribution upon sustainable transport facilities as set above. And if the council does not spend the contribution in accordance with the legal definition, the developer can claw this back with the, with the addition of interest. The council received um, the, uh, the contribution in 2017, um, 25th of May, and um, as until 25th of May 2022, spend it. So to some extent, there's some pressure to to get this um, moving forward and, and spent. Um, after that date, if we don't have it spent by that date, 
and development call back in, with interest 4% above the base rates. OK, um, the council section 106 offers a consultant with the relevant cabinet members, local ward member, which is Councillor Christine, Christine K, and service areas upon receipt of the contribution between, two th between um, 11th of July 2017 and the 1st of August 2017, providing the details of contribution, including the legal definition and expiry date. In this case, the highways department is the relevant service area, and as we said earlier, the 5K 5,000 has been allocated screen links, a community transport initiative and bus service, which serves the whole of the area of Northern, particularly the rural, in accordance with the capital resolution dated 30th of July 2018. A balance of, as we said before, 1,000, sorry, 127,191 pounds, 50 pence remains for the other sustainable transport facilities. Um, in October, 2017, the Council's Section 106 Officer um, and the Operational Manager for Engineering Office from the Highways Department met with Council Cave and Cobbers and the Community Council and discussed the 106 contribution. And a proposed concept was discussed, which comprised a new two metre footway within the Highway Bridge on the western side of the carriageway, improvements to the pavement on the eastern side of the carriageway, and a series of new control coffins to improve the protesting link between Red Road Development and Site Access, St David's Church and Wales Primary School, and the facilities of the play area, playing fields, car park, and community centre. And on 22nd January 2018, Cabinet approved the band B phase of the 21st Century Schools programme. And on the 15th of February 2018, Council's uh, Section 106 officer met with Colbertson Community Council and the officers from the Education Department. With the Education Department advised that it was their intention as part of the band the 21st Century Schools programme to address the condition of the school building at St David's Church and Wales School, subject to fully exploring all options and funding, grant funding. At that point, it was considered um, logical by all parties, 106 transport, sorry, 106 sustainable transport to be considered in the future holistically when proposals for the school have been um, to prevent damage and the Board of Works being undertaken. Um, yeah, OK. So the proposals for the replacement of school were subsequently developed and consulted upon, and these were approved in 2nd September 2020. And then condition 14 of that plan and permission states that prior to the school being occupied, the more than 140 pupils, the following shall be provided and carried out. A footway in the area of the verge cross along the western side of the highway that runs adjacent to the application site, provide a pedestrian link to the car park that lies adjacent to the village hall, a crossing point from the new footway to the eastern side of the road, and the laying out demarcation of a formalised parking area with lines to the Indian Aid parking banks in the area adjacent to the village hall. These works shall be carried out in accordance with the details that shall first be submitted to and approved in writing by the local planning authority. Um, and those details should generally be reflected in the indicative layouts submitted on the 20th of August 2020. Right. And the reasons, of course, were in the stress of pedestrian highway safety and ensure compliance with the policies SP1, MD2, or the LDP. Notwithstanding this condition linked to the school, it has always been envisaged that the 106 sustained transport contribution would be used to provide improvements between the development site, school, and play area, community centre, and open space, as discussed on the 31st of October 2017. And also at the time, the plan application was reflected within the word in the 106 legal definition of sustained trans transport facilities. So, that's quite a lengthy introduction, um, and, and it's quite rightly, there's a few considerations. Um, the scheme itself comprises of um, a new footway along the western edge, and it um, includes setting back the existing boundary wall adjacent to play area to be set back two and a half metres to facilitate the footway and improve access visibility for cars exiting the car park, seeking to improve pedestrian safety. Um, improvements in the footway to the east of carriageway and a series of uncontrolled dropping crossing points and drop curbs between the eastern and western footpaths and to link the, the replacement school, the entrance and development site now called Hill Kai Pool, the play area, playing fields, the car park and the community centre and improved visibility displays for vehicles exiting the car park to improve public safety. So. On in February 21, um, so the 22nd of February, 
the 106 officer notified the relevant cabinet members and local board members, Council Christine Cave, of the draft scheme and in accordance with the S106 protocol. And the report goes into um, quite a bit of detail, correspondence um, on concerns and, and the main concerns that have been raised by Council Cave and the uh, Coverston Community Council are the fact that it's a substation is for them the, the piece that should be considered as part of this. Um, the officers are considered at length, and although we, you know, I, I, we can understand this, the the substation isn't the place where they'd like it. It doesn't affect the highway, so because there was um, in the report it goes into detail about um, a complaint that was made about whether the substation was, and the out, outcome of that uh, complaint, um, it, you know, it was considered in 2016 that. The sub substation has no impact on the adopted highway and there's no significant uh, highway safety uh, hazards. So from a, a highway issue, it's, it's not a relevant concern. Doesn't, therefore, it doesn't form within the 106 protocol for sustainable transport. Um, and, there's, you know, there have been other options considered and put forward by Council Cave and the Community Council and that's the, you know as an alternative but the highways officers have considered those and there still is concern about um, this you know um, east of the particular um, proposal that's the, the pedestrians will still need to go into the highway and it's not resolving the whole issue hence that the proposal that we've got actually ensures that, it, that, that that's um, covered on both aspects um so let me see um there is the council case also advised that she's met with uh, western power distribution and indicated an option maybe to reorientate the substation that you issue at minimal cost i think it's already been made clear that the the one of six monies can't be used for that um so and also the actual cost of that hasn't been brought forward um my view on that is that and if we could find those out, then that, then that might change, you know, might, might be part of a discussion. But at the moment, they aren't presented with the timescales that we're talking about. And the fact that substation doesn't fit within the 106 criteria, I'm concerned that we, we will lose any benefits from the funding at all. So, that's, that's a, so from my kind of, I would support the officers on this. That it's um, recommended the proposal that we've got on this particular proposal, the 106 design that we move that forward uh, and any balance then can be considered for future schemes. So um, I'm sorry I went through on that quite a bit of detail. There's quite a bit of background. It's not a one-off issue. It's something that's been ongoing for several years since the substation's been there and certainly unfortunately in this case it can't, it can't be resolved by the use of the 106. So the recommendation then is to authorise the Council's Highway Department to progress this scheme identified in Appendix B to detail feasibility design and implementation using the balance of the Section 106 to say transport contribution of £127,191.51 received from the development at land to the rear of St David's Primary School, Commerston. So that's my recommendation to cabinets um it's open for discussion with cabinets to see if there's any, any comments to make either okay thank you i know i i know i may have some comments but it depends on what other people say um i think councillor ben gray's got his hand up at the moment so do you want to come in ben please thank you leader um i um i, I just want to thank uh councillor williams for um the lengthy explanation and um, the comparison to the 54 page report with appendices it's a very short explanation uh, I, I i understand the the issues in terms of the report um which um we often come across this in planning committee is the the issues from the community um may not exactly match up with the issues relating to the application of uh, and decisions relating to planning applications so in this sense i'm going to use the same type of judgment this is about how we apply the 106 monies and it's not a judgment on any plans for or against the ideas involved with with moving it's simply and i can see the rationale from within the report that the 106 money cannot be used effectively um, 
in the way that is suggested uh, and the reason for the call in um and 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 there is a, a suggested way of, of using the money so um I'd, I'd formally second um the recommendations there but i appreciate there may be other points people want to make but i i just to, to, to me um i think we have to we have to look at this in the context that it's it's in front of us which is exactly what we're instructed and we need to do when it comes to planning matters um and, uh, and it'd be wrong of me not to not to make a point of that um having formally chaired the planning committee and currently the vice chair of it, although I wasn't involved with this application uh, um, to my knowledge. So, um, so yeah, I'd, 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 second, I'd second the recommendations in the, in, in, in the report as, as, as stated. OK, um, Liz, do you want to come in, please? Uh, thank you, Leader. Yes, just, just to comment that um, I know that there have been a few um, requests to defer today's um, report um, for further consideration of a site visit. Um, I know that, that Councillor King is, is aware of, of those letters, although he said he can't join us today. Um, and exactly as, as, um, as, as Ben and Eddie previously had said, this is this is a separate issue. Um, we we cannot use Section 106 um, sustainable transport funding for the issue that has been raised. So moving this forward today does not stop there being a subsequent discussion um, ab about the substation should that be um, required. So it, it's a question of these are two totally different things. There would be nothing to gain by by deferring it today. Okay, thank you. Um, I got a couple of little things. Um, just for the just for the clarity and brevity, I think you may have said 132 million. If you did, it's 132 thousand. I wish it was 132 million, but let's let's make sure nobody tries to pick that up and say we said something wrong. Um, I think the crux of the, the report really comes in, in some respects, in, in relation to 215 and 216, um, where it actually confirms that um, it would be, wouldn't be lawful to actually um, to spend them section 106 transport, uh, sustainable transport money on the, on the scheme. The other thing is, of course, that um, we've been asked by, uh, I know Councillor Cave was asked, and I think we've had a letter in this today from, from uh, Jane Hutt, um, asking us to postpone it, but I see no purpose in doing that because uh, if there are negotiations being carried out to, to move the substation at a cost, no, nobody knows what cost, then that doesn't doesn't preclude it happening um, by by s s some form or other. But it does it can't come from the section 106 money, as far as I can see. That's the report we've got. So. 216 concludes the recommendations as outlined in Appendix 3 are progressed. Um, and I th and I think and I, and I think we, we need we need to ensure that um, if we spend the money, we have to spend it legally, so it can't be can't be clawed back, um, and we have to spend it within the time frame available to us. So to be honest, um, I understand the, the issues, I understand that the people want to move. The, the, the substation and if it's possible fine but it can't come out of section 106 monies and therefore um, I would I would to be back back in the recommendations before us today um, I don't know if anybody has got any comments if not uh, Eddie you're proposing the recommendations which is to authorize the council's highway department to progress the scheme identified in appendix B to detailed feasibility design and impl implementation using the balance of section 106 sustainable transport contribution which £127,000 odd, received from the development of the land to the Rio St. David School, Colmus then received pursuant to planning reference 2014-00242 oblique full. Uh, and I, I will say that on, on purpose. Um, clearly, uh, Section 106 uh, has a protocol. The protocol allows it to come back here for final determination, and therefore uh, that is what we're currently doing, as long as people understand that. So without further ado, is everybody in agreement or is there anybody wishes to make any other comment? Agreed. All, other, all other ways. No. OK, thank you. In that case, that's approved. Uh, the next item is uh, item 10, which is adopting together service. Um, and again, we've been the lead authority and it looks like we're go looking to renew it. Ben, it's over to you, please. Thank you, leader. And um, uh, yeah, item. Uh, uh, 
uh, around this is to do with the adopting together service um, securing adoptive placements for children requiring adoptions a function delegated to the collaborative uh, by its partner agencies uh, us being one of those partner agencies although case responsibility remains with the placing authority in 2019 it was agreed that there was a need to formalize the contractual arrangements between the placing authorities and adopting together by way of a service level agreement bbc at fails valleys and cardiff um under the terms of the agreement underpinning the collaborative were not permitted to enter such agreements with adopted together on behalf of the partner authority without the nest authority being in place so on the 17th of june 2019 cabinet agreed to bbc entering into such an agreement on its behalf uh, of partner authorities uh, this agreement now needs to be renewed and able to continue to deliver the service um it's been a very effective service and it's certainly um, useful for those uh, children who are um, presenting with additional needs and who are traditionally harder to adopt and and we've always been able to help those children but this kind of had formalized that arrangement so the recommendations are one that cabinet agree to renew for a period of five years from the expiry of the previous service of agreement the verdict morgan council this host authority for the collaborative to enter into contractual arrangements with st david's adoption agency and bernardo's Cymru for the provision of placements for hard to place children and two, the delegated authority be granted to the head of children and young people services and the monetary officer head of legal democratic services agree terms and enter into forms of contract with said bodies under the adopting together service and that's a move okay thank you ben it just it seems sensible it's been working particularly well so far and um, this is just a sensible approach uh, i would formally second is anybody got any comments if not that is approved uh, in terms of item 11, uh, I have no items which are urgent under part one and neither do I under part two. So I will um, close this meeting and thank you for your attendance and we'll see you at the next cabinet meeting. So thank you for your attendance um, and thank you for uh, your, your work thus far. Thank you very much.